All right, guys, so we're gonna come to the top of our mat standing so we can work some of our standing roll downs. I'm gonna start with a wider stance in the foot and in the leg, almost mat width apart. Easier for balance and it's easier to warm into that hamstring and back stretch. So once we find the placement of the feet, feel the contact from heel all the way through the ball of the foot to the toes, allow the toes to spread across your mat. And we're gonna reach the arms up straight up overhead. And on that exhale, we fold the mid ribs, curling and rolling down, piece by piece, rolling towards the floor. And we wanna keep the weight both in our heels and at the ball of the foot. So we're trying to have as vertical of a leg as possible really letting the head hang. Feel like your feet, your legs are trying to tear the floor, the mat apart underneath you so you get that spread and that stretch of the, the arch of the foot and the ankle don't cave in. On that next exhale, we're gonna tuck the tailbone, draw the shoulders down and back, find that rounding and that curling of the spine, restacking nice and tall, nice and long. Arms reach up overhead, we interlace the fingers and we stretch up and over to the right. Back to center, lengthening up out of the waist as we stretch to the left. Coming to center, I'm gonna walk my feet in about an inch or two so I'm in a more parallel position. And hands separate, folding at the mid ribs, curling and rolling down. Once again, feeling the even weight across the bottom of the foot as you curl and drop towards the floor, letting the crown of the head hang for the floor. We wanna feel again that weight dispersed evenly across the foot from heel to toe and from right to left across the pad of the foot, the ball of the foot. One more breath and then exhale to tuck and curl restacking the spine coming up nice and tall nice and long arms reach overhead fingers interlace and then we hinge to the right stretching up out of the waist back to center lengthening up nice and long and over to the other side arms are going to separate hands separate at the top i'm going to walk the feet in side by side, pulling through inner thigh, slight tuck of the tailbone, and then fold and curl once again. Curling and rolling down towards the mat. This requires a little bit more balance and control as you roll and drop for the floor. Letting the head hang. Feel the whole back of the body stretch from base of the skull all the way down around the spine, down the back of the legs to the heel. One more breath and then exhale to tuck and curl. Restacking that spine piece by piece, reaching all the way up overhead, fingers interlaced, we stretch long for the ceiling and we hinge to the right, keeping the hips stacked over the knees and the feet back to center, lengthen up, and over to the other side. Returning to center, arms come down by your side. We're gonna to return to our wider stance. I'm gonna turn just a little sideways, just for a better viewing angle. I'm gonna be about mat width apart, shoulder width apart with my feet, and we're gonna work a little bit of our squat. My arms are gonna flow forward to about chest height as I drive the knees out and I reach the hips back. Slow to press up through the heel as you stand tall, stretch long, opening fully through the front of the hip. So you're still, you're not keeping that crease at the front of the hip. And we sit back, knees go forward and out, and we press through the full foot. There's a little bit of a turnout of the foot of the leg, about five or 10 degrees. And we're rotating the upper leg in the hip. So it's not just about the foot twisting and especially not about the knee twisting. We want the whole leg to twist in the hip 
to create that external rotation to help drive the knees out over the center of the foot. Engaging the abdominals, drawing the ribs in. Two more. And standing tall. We're going to work into our lunge. Now, a wide stance with the feet and the legs makes it easier to balance, like if you're about hip width apart. We're going to work a bit of a challenging position for an inline lunge, whereas if you're walking a tightrope, a nice straight line across your mat. I would start with one or two in a more wider open stance before walking in. So I'll step forward with the right foot, just in line, kind of with that sit bone, I've got some good spacing. And I want to make sure that my stance is long enough, so as I bend that back left knee, and I drop towards the mat, there's enough space between the knee and the heel. And pressing up and dropping down. You can hover above the floor, you could come to just a half lunge. I'm going to work two more. And then I'm going to narrow my stance. You could stay in this stance in your wider gait. But I'm going to walk it in. So I'm going to line my feet and my legs up. And I need to have enough space between the back of my front right heel and the front of my left foot. So as I bend that left knee and I come down, I can drop in right behind that right heel. Slow as you come back up. And slow to lower. Pressing through the front foot, through the front leg. Lowering smoothly straight down through the mat. And then driving right back up. Last two. And then we'll change our stance. Right leg comes to the back. Left leg comes to the front. I'm in my wider stance. And bending that back right knee down to the floor. And driving up. Nice and long through the spine. Feeling the even weight of the front left foot from heel to toe. I'm going to do one more and then walk it in for that inline lunge. So again, finding that straight line, that tightrope, but enough space so when my back right knee drops to the floor, I'm almost touching my front left heel. Lowering straight down, pressing up nice and strong. And about two more. Walking back to the top or bottom of your mat. Feet are sits bones distance apart, legs are parallel. Arms come to the front and we're in a fold and curl. Rolling down to the floor, letting the head hang. Feeling that stretch up the back of the leg. One more breath. 
And then we're going to walk our hands forward, trying not to sway the body too much, coming out to that center plank, pressing up strong and away from the floor, feeling the stretch and that strength driving out of the leg from the hip. Five, four, three, two, one. Elbows bend, lower to the mat. And back extension. We'll curl up and sit back towards the heels. Reaching the arms out nice and long overhead. And we'll round the spine, curling the back, bringing the chest forward over the hands and the wrists. And we'll curl the toes under to the mat, pop back up into that strong center plank, pressing up away from the floor, pulling everything in nice and tight to your center line. And then hips go high. Reaching up and back, slide the shoulders down as you lengthen the neck, press the heels towards the floor. And we'll walk our feet forward, working that inchworm, working that stretch of the leg as you walk your feet in. Head hangs. When you walk in as far as you can get, taking another breath, and then exhale to restack the spine. Curling and rolling back up, arms reach up overhead, fingers interlace, palms up towards the ceiling, chest lifts. down by your side. We'll step back with that right leg nice and long and we'll drop that right knee to the mat. Driving the hips forward, you can lengthen your gait or stance to create more opening between the front and back leg to stretch to the front of the hip. Shoulders are down, collarbone spreads wide, Left hand is going to come down to the floor on the inside of that left foot. So we can rotate through the mid ribs and the right arm can reach up overhead. Keep pressing the hips forward and down. And slow to reset. Hands to the mat. One hand on either side of that front left leg. We'll extend the right leg, picking the knee up off of the mat. And with control and core engagement, that left foot, left leg presses back, and we're in our plank. Hips go back and up for that downward dog stretch. And feet walk in for inchworm. Nice and slow. Stretching the calves, stretching the back of the legs. Try not to bend the knees as the feet walk in. Let the head hang. Exhale, tuck and curl. Restacking the spine piece by piece. Arms reach up overhead, fingers interlace. We go palms up towards the ceiling. Glutes and abdominals are active as we add our back bend. Reset and arms come down by your side. We step back 
with that left leg. Drop the left knee. Adjust your stance as needed. And we press the hips forward and down. Opening and stretching the front of that left hip and quad. Shoulders are down. Collarbone spreads wide as we draw the ribs and the abdominals in. And then we're going to place our right hand down to the mat on the inside of that right foot. Left hand, left arm reaches up as we rotate. Keep pressing the hips down and forward. One hand to the front, either side of that front right leg. Extend and straighten the left knee. That left leg is straight. Bracing through the core, we pick the right foot up and we step it back, returning to that center plank. And hips reach high. Back to downward dog, pressing away from the floor, sliding the shoulders down, driving the heels down to the mat, letting the neck lengthen, the elbows lock out, right knee bends as we press the left heel deeper to the floor, and switch, and switch. Last one, driving that right heel to the mat. Both heels stretch, add a little extension to the back. Round the spine now, curl forward. Back to that center plank. And elbows bend, lower yourself to the floor. Chest lifts into that back extension, peel up, sit back, kneeling, reaching your hips back over your heels with arms stretching out nice and long overhead. On that next exhale, we're going to curl and restack into a tall kneeling position, rounding the spine. Lifting up off of the heels, pressing the hips forward, rolling the shoulders back and down. I'm going to drop the top of the foot to the mat, widen my knee position, press the heels together so I'm in a bit of a V to help connect to the back of the hips and into the glutes more. Arms come to the front and on the inhale I hinge at the knee, fall back and exhale, rise. I'm not trying to lead with the head or the shoulders. I want my whole body to lead as one unit. Staying active and strong through the abdominals as you pull the ribs in, pressing the hips together, rounding them and pulling them into your center line at your sacrum. Last three. One more. And hands come to the mat. Finding our nice quadruped position, we're going to line our knees and our thighs up underneath our hips. Hands and wrists under the shoulders, a little bit tighter of a position than you would think, so just make sure you're not reaching in front of you with your hands. Curl the toes under, and we're going to press up, lifting the knees, finding that hover as we pull our ribs and our abdominals in deeper. Holding strong for five, four, 
three, two, one. Knees drop. We sit back, stretch back, walking the hands forward, reaching out nice and long overhead. And exhale, curl and restack. Sitting up nice and tall, nice and long. We're gonna sit to our hips with knees bent. You could work this with a double bent knee or a single bent knee. You may wanna play around with each leg position to see which gives you the best stability and support. And it may be nice to have one leg straight to keep some of that pressure off the front of the hip. We're gonna work our roll-ups. Arms come to the front and we're gonna tilt the hips back, curling into that round back, rolling back to the mat, just to the tip of the shoulder blade, and then fold and curl. Rolling back up, feeling that stretch come up through the back of the hips through the low back and sitting tall. Hips tilt back, we find that C curve and curl and round back for the mat. Folding at the mid ribs, drawing navel to spine. We fold and curl, reaching out nice and long with the arms and restacking, sitting tall. Folding deep at the mid ribs as you draw the abdominals in and reaching up nice and long. We're going to cross the ankles, cross the legs, resetting our hips so we're sitting up nice and tall out of the sit bones. Our pelvis isn't tucked under. And we're going to bring our arms, fingers, and our laced hands behind the head. Dropping those shoulders down, lengthen through the neck. We're gonna twist to the right. Holding for breath. And then back to center, twisting to the other side. Finding that nice rotation through the mid rib. Not letting the hips or the legs shift as you twist from side to side. One more right and left. And we'll come forward. Hands come off the back of the head and we walk them forward, stretch the spine, rounding out over the legs. And exhale, curl and restack. Sitting up nice and tall, nice and long. We'll change the crossing of the legs. And arms are gonna reach up overhead. Fingers interlace, feel the weight of the hips pressing straight down into the mat as you hinge over to the right and back to center. Lengthen up out of the waist and hinge left. and back to center. Working these side bends, these tilts. Lengthening up out of the waist, out of the hips. Stretching straighter and longer for the ceiling.
Keeping the legs still and the hips locked against your mat. One more each side. And arms rest down by your side. We're going to uncross the legs, bend the knees. Feet are flat. Let's curl and roll back. Flat to our mat. Finding that little gap between the low back and the floor. And we're working either that straight arm or we've been also incorporating this bent elbow position into a lot of our mat work to engage the tricep, press down through the back of the arm to anchor the shoulder girdle against the mat. Working into our pelvic curl, we're gonna exhale to tilt the hips back, create that C curve, that hollowing, and then peeling up off the mat, one segment, one vertebra at a time. We hold for an inhale at the top, and then next exhale, we curl along the spine all the way back down. Making sure that there's no movement in the upper body from mid ribs, draw a line up. So we're not sliding along our mat. We need to create movement in the spine, the hip, the knee, as well as the ankle. We need to create that dorsiflexion at the ankle to allow the shin and the knee to move forward towards the toes. And that will also prevent us from feeling our body and our body weight shift up or having us slide up the mat. Rolling down out of your last pelvic curl. We'll bring our legs up to tabletop. Interlace the fingers, bringing the hands behind the head. And we'll fold and lift. Head, neck, and chest supporting the head and the neck. Gliding those shoulders down so we can feel the tension build at the underarm. And reaching long with that right leg. Slow as we pull it back. Reach and extend out with the left, pulling it back. We reach long, keeping that nice deep chest lift, that deep fold across the mid ribs. One more right, last one left, and we'll hug the knees in towards the chest, pull in, grab the knees with the hands, and we're going to keep this tight position so we create a rounding in the back, and we're going to work into a more classical double leg stretch. On the inhale, arms and legs move away. And arms circle around, drawing the knees, hugging the knees in, a bit of a rounding in the spine. And inhale, open. Circle the arms, back to that bent knee. Hug in, stretch the back. Keep the chest lift as you slightly tuck the chin. Last two. And we'll pull 
pull the knees in, drop the shoulders, the head and the neck back to the floor. Knees are bent, feet return to the mat, nice and flat. Arms open out to a T position, palms up. We're gonna tilt the hips back, imprint the low back. Feel that stretch along the spine and head and neck twist and look out to the right. Keeping that flexion in the lumbar spine, head and neck twist and look out left. One more each side, keeping the abdominals knitted in, the ribs cinched tight, arms reaching long, and that flexion in the low back. Come back to center. Legs come to tabletop. On the exhale, legs extend up towards the ceiling, and inhale, legs lower, straight and long, and exhale, lift up. Reaching out nice and long with the legs. Using that inhale, that bracing as the legs lower. Only taking it as far as you don't add any torque to the hip or the low back. And one more. Bend the knees. Left leg extends out long across the mat. We'll hug that right knee in towards the chest and then drop the leg over to the left. Right arm opens back out to its T and we twist and look out over that right arm. One more breath. And then we'll unwind. Changing sides. Right leg stretches out nice and long. Left knee pulls in. Left arm opens out to that T. We twist over and to the right, looking out over that left arm and shoulder. And unwind, coming back together, back to center. Knees are gonna be bent. We'll bring our legs to tabletop. Arms are gonna reach up overhead, palms up towards the ceiling. On the exhale, arms flow forward. We lift the head, neck, and chest. You can stay in tabletop or extend the legs as we pulse the arms from the shoulder. Working that full hundreds movement, either in tabletop, keeping that strong chest lift, just moving the arms or reaching out long with the legs. You could even move in and out of that. Do a couple with tabletop, do a few with double leg extensions. Straight and long with the legs, we pulse for 10, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Hugging the knees in, rounding the back. We drop that left foot, cross right ankle over left knee and into our figure four stretch. Make sure you've got a little arch at the small of the back. And right leg twists away from the chest and the shoulder. And we switch, right foot down, left leg crosses right, reach through, grab the back of that right thigh, and left leg twists. One more breath. And we'll hug 
hug the knees in, fold and lift the head, neck, and chest. Grab the back of the thighs with a little momentum. We curl and roll up into that teaser prep. Nice flat back. We hinge back, extending the spine, and then hands come off the legs. We hold for five, four, three, two, one. Feet drop, butterfly pose, soles of the feet together, sitting up long out of the sit bones as we drop those shoulders down, we hinge forward. Nice flat back, proud chest. Pulling yourself as low as you like, just try not to collapse around the back just yet. Chin to chest, bow the head, let the back of the neck stretch, let the back round and release. And we'll curl and restack. We'll work our last rotational stretch. We're going to wrap that left foot around the right hip, right foot around the left knee. Take hold of that right knee with the left arm and we reach and rotate back to the right. Sitting up nice and tall, nice and long. And slow to unwind. We'll change our leg cross. We'll lace that right foot under the left knee around to the side of the left hip. Left foot wraps around to the outside of that right knee and thigh. Right arm wraps that left leg. We twist left. Left hand, left arm reaches back. We sit tall and rotate through the mid ribs. One more breath and slow to unwind. We'll come to a standing position so we can work a few more roll downs. So find some space on your mat, feet and legs are hip width apart or sits bones distance apart. Reaching up long overhead, we exhale to fold and curl. Rounding and rolling towards the floor, feeling that even weight from heel to the tip of the toes across the bottom of the foot. Back of the leg is stretching nice and long. And exhale, curl and restock. Restocking the spine nice and tall, nice and long. Arms reach up overhead, fingers interlaced and stretch straight up for the ceiling. And arms rest down by your side. All right, guys. Awesome work today. Great job.